My life is full of joys and success, and I am hyper aware of just how much I am blessed. Deep down in my core, I am truly grateful. But here on the sun-kissed surface of my soul, I am dispirited, distressed by every traumatic event, by next month's unpaid rent, by every abuse, by every betrayal, by every injustice, by every bend in the trail that was almost a break. We're told that depression is a chemical imbalance, a physiological malfunction, but the truth is that depression is a psychological symptom, not a physical cause. Perhaps it's pessimism writ large, or else just optimism overwritten. I've recently learned how my years of PTSD and burnout are doing the same sort of long-term damage to my prefrontal cortex as psychiatric medication, only without the benefits. That my personality has been gradually decomposing into a downward spiral stairway through the gates of hell, and as I circle around and around, I see every interaction's intention as its dark timeline alternative. I see threats in every attempt to bridge the gaps that have grown steadily between the orbits of our island soul galaxies. I wrap my anxieties around my sense of self's instabilities like a warm, electrifying blanket that makes my blood boil and keeps the cool, fresh air at bay, that makes me stare longingly at sunsets but then quickly turn away before I have a chance to let the beauty stray to touch my heart and linger that makes every smile fade too fast because it feels too good to be true, so I overthink it away. But I do remember how to laugh sometimes, and not just nervously, and I do remember how to scan event horizons for the capsules of goodness that have been frozen in time. I remember how to identify constellations and the tiny pinpricks of light that take eons to get through my dark nights and know that this lonely rock I'm standing on is just one drop in an infinite sea of misery, that we've all hit rot bottom collectively, and that our only hope is to remember that we didn't choose to be born in a world of outsiders and aliens while our ancestors' stories echo in our ears telling lovely lies about the old worlds, smaller, manageable worlds, where life was easier and people had character and words like better and happiness actually meant something before we ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and woke up to see that we're a shame of cowardly lions scavenging the ruins of a paradise overrun by flying monkeys and small men hiding behind loud voices, that we're heroes in training, without swords, without shields, without training, because nobody ever taught us how to defend ourselves or even that we could defend ourselves. Instead, we've been raised to shackle ourselves to the miseries of our forefathers, raised to repeat their mistakes by raising the stakes that our very lives are riding on, raised to space out repeatedly tugging on the sleeves of one-armed bandits begging for the money to pay overdue fees for our borrowed sins. But this house of God is just another casino where the house always wins. On my black days, with their grey underbelly of bloated clouds threatening a shitstorm, and heavy with acid indigestion rain, with the leaden thump of my charcoal heart pumping polluted fumes into the rivers of toxic sludge coursing through my veins. My body is merely a reflection of the outside, a world overpopulated with slaves to the cold and the cruel, while we fuel the machines of our self-destruction with our desperate self-absorption, panicking our way from paycheck to paycheck. In our spare change time, we build ourselves shrines and we tend to our tiny fenced-off gardens. We seek to find like-minded others to invite into our homes. But every time someone new trails their crap onto our carpet, we become just a little bit more disheartened. We learn not to trust or take chances. We become shut-ins, finding fortitude in solitude because isolation is the only possible way to maintain control of a social situation keeping our own company because internal battles don't give black eyes, only black hearts. But this is the end, beautiful friend. I hear the alarm and I pull myself out of bed. I drink my drug to wake up and face the morning. I spend dawn to dusk panning for the missed gold and precious stones that didn't wash up on the Wall Street banks of Debt River. I spend long hours contemplating the simpler times when we didn't matter.
when our feelings didn't matter, when we denied and drank away our pain just to get through each day, when suicide was a crime against God because it robbed the Lord of his pay, and how we've really still got one foot standing firmly in that grave. But I have to say that in spite of all this, I am grateful. I may be tied to the tracks and only questionably sane, but the first step for anyone trying to save themselves is realizing that there is an oncoming train.